Yeah. 
Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. Um, thank you for the opportunity that we have to gather together and worship you. Um, thank you that uh, we live in a country where we have the freedom to even be able to do this. Um, and uh, I just please uh, lift, lift up this service and uh, ask that you bless and anoint Pastor Tim and his words and uh, bless everybody in this audience here today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, you may all be seated. My name is Matthew Schuster, and I will be giving you today's announcements. First off, we meet here every Saturday at 5 p.m. and every Wednesday at 7 p.m. We're also on YouTube. Check us out on YouTube and uh, tell all your friends to check us out on YouTube or preferably to come here in person. Um, this is very important, guys. The first Wednesday of every month at 7 p.m., we have Praise and Worship Night which I believe is this Wednesday. So you all better be here. No excuses. 7 p.m. Um, also on Wednesdays, we have Kids Church for ages um, pre-K to three and a half, and then also uh, first through sixth grade. So if you have kids, bring them. And then we also have the Jesus Pieces Youth Group on Wednesdays, also at 7 p.m. So important, guys. I was a part of it. Changed my life. 
um, I'm still here, like, doing this because of it. So, uh, thank you. Very important. Um, just keep that in mind. The Dunamis has a meeting March 8th at 7.15 uh, p.m., so that's coming up pretty soon. And then the Epic Ministry has a meeting March 17th at 1 p.m. And then lastly, we have prayer meetings every Friday at 10 a.m., also extremely important. So if you're free at that time, uh, please make sure you're a part of that. Um, and that's all I got, so I'd like to invite Mr. Randy for today's offering. Thank you, guys. Praise God. Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> praise God. That's a good easy name to remember. <laughs> praise God. Oh, praise God. God is so good. Amen. Uh, the power of the gospel in our life is such a powerful thing. Amen. And so, uh, as Matthew was saying, uh, my name is Randy Sapita, and I'd like to receive today's uh, tithes and offerings. Amen. Praise God. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, as I was saying, the power of the gospel in our lives makes such a difference. Uh, one famous uh, evangelist would say, all you need is just one word from God, right? <laughs> and so that's all we need is just one word from God. You just hear the word of God and to uh, the light of the gospel to change our lives, amen? Who here is, uh, has had a situation in your life where uh, you didn't know what to do, and then God showed you what to do uh, through his word, amen? I know I've, I've had many situations like that and uh, situations in my family. And thank God for the gospel that came in and supported me and gave me, uh, lifted me up, uh, uh, like the scripture says, like wings like eagles and then be able to soar over your problems. Amen. And so the support, thank you for supporting the gospel. Amen. Us supporting the gospel is an important thing. So, so, so critical. And we're all the fruit of that. Amen. I'd like the scripture I'd like to use is in Matthew chapter 5, verses uh, 15 and 16. And the light of the gospel coming into our lives uh, makes such a difference. Um, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light to all those, all that are in the house. Amen. Thank God for the light in your house and in my house. Amen. The light of the gospel to change things. And, nothing, and the peace of God coming into our life. Amen. So let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. So your support of the gospel is bringing fruit. Amen. Matthew is just up here, and he's been coming since he was born. Amen. He's a fruit of the gospel. And, 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 and other uh, young men that are here, uh, but I won't mention any names, but <laughs> they're a fruit. Let's turn to your neighbor and say, you're a fruit of the gospel. Amen. And so praise God. Thank God for the gospel to being preached here. Amen. Wednesday, pastor started doing uh, uh, the serv the healing scriptures. Uh, such, a, such a powerful thing, and I really believe. And I'm already hearing results, praise reports uh, from it. You know, of people heal receiving their healing and their deliverance. Amen. So, um, as you give today, know that. It's because of your giving, your support of the gospel, that's making a difference in your life, in your house, and everybody here uh, at church. Amen. And I just I love the people here at Good News. Amen. And because they're a product of the gospel, and they're such a blessing. Amen. Let me pray for your giving. Father, I just thank you, Lord, Father, for the gospel. For your word, Lord, that brings light into our life, Lord. And, Father, brings change and help and deliverance into our life. And so, Father, we just, I pray, Father, for each and every person as they give, Lord. Father, as they support the gospel. Father, I thank you for revelation and knowledge and wisdom for them, Lord. And, Father, I thank you for supernatural breakthrough in their lives where they need it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Randy. God is good, amen? amen? Hallelujah. If you have a birthday this month, will you please stand? We want to pray for all those who have birthdays so we can bless you and put God's blessing on you. That means Lisa in the back will be standing. I know that. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's a couple of Lisas here. I found out the difference. The Lisa in the back is spelt with two S's because her dad thought she was special, special. 
any of those in the overflow room, or those of you at home, if it's your birthday, if you want to stand up or just put your hand on yourself at home, I want to pray for those whose birthday it is. Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, a child is a special thing, and as they grow older, they become more and more special before you. So, Father God, I ask your richest blessing on each person here who is celebrating their birthday this month. Encourage them and strengthen them, and let this be a great month and a great day on their birthday and a great year for them. Bless them, Heavenly Father. Bless them when they go in. Bless them when they come out. Bless them, Father God. Bless them in every way, and I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please say happy birthday to them. Happy birthday. God bless you. Yeah, uh, Randy referred to this last Wednesday. It was a wonderful time as we, we sat and listened to the, the scriptures on healing and then uh, the confession right after. Our thinking there and our belief there and our trust there is that you'll be able to watch those at home and listen to those and listen to those and listen to those. And we try to delay it enough on the confession part where you can say the confession also. Not just listen, but also say the confession. I know we that were here were saying along the confession right after it was on the, uh, on the video uh, please do that, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. I know a lot of times we want to talk about what's going on in our bodies or what's going on when we're somewhere and we're facing something tough, but it's really a good idea to confess the Word of God, because faith uh, comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so as we hear the Word of God over and over and over again, somebody says, is it just you saying it that makes a difference? Well, I believe Jesus said what you say is important, so yeah, you saying things are important, but also... A hearing the Word of God and then hearing yourself say the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So that is very important. So if you want to go on the um, YouTube or on our, uh, get online on our, uh, on our website, you can turn that on and follow that and listen to that. And I would really encourage you, if you're facing something, uh, listen to that and just listen and confess and go along with it, and it will bless you. It's, it's just a good thing to do, hearing the Word and confessing the Word. That was, that was this last Wednesday. Now, this coming Wednesday is going to be a blessed Wednesday also because this coming Wednesday is one of our favorite Wednesdays, and that's when the praise and worship team lead us in a whole night of praise and worship. And there's a whole lot of uh, joy, presence of God, and power of God in the room when we praise and worship God. He says he inhabits the praises of his people. And so on those Wednesdays, there seems to be a special anointing that comes in the room and really blesses us that are there. So please, I would invite you to be here uh, this Wednesday. I'd invite you to get on our YouTube or on our website and listen to the healing scriptures and confess them because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And then I want to thank you. I want to thank you for being here today. I want to thank you for supporting Good News Church. I want to thank you for uh, being here and praying for us and blessing us with your prayers, your financial support, your physical support. As we go through this journey of moving and getting things ready, I want to thank you. I appreciate you very much. And please, appreciate one another. You know, appreciate one another. Make sure we tell each other we really do appreciate you. In fact, uh, those in the overflow room, those here, why don't you just give each other a hand clap for standing firm. God wants to bless us, and we're going to go through that, but I, before I give you the title, I just want to talk to you. Praying for somebody is, is a good thing. Them receiving the prayer is a very powerful and important thing. So we can have someone speak a real good prayer over us, they can speak a blessing over us, but if we just reject it, it doesn't come into us. So today, the title is Receive God's Blessing. I'm going to ask you to make it a point as we go along to inside of yourself to say, I receive your blessing, God. I receive your blessing. First of all, let me just start by saying God is a blesser. There's no question at all from the very beginning of time that's recorded in the Bible, it tells us that God Almighty is a blesser. The Bible tells us that God created the heavens and the earth. He made all of this. And it says time and time again in Genesis 1, after you did something, it was good, it was good, it was good, it was good, it was good. And then he said, I'm going to make man, he's going to be in my image, and he's going to have, he's going to have authority over the earth. And then he made man, had Adam and Eve there, and he looked and he said, things are very good. God blessed man with a very good place, a very good system, and he is a blesser. Turn to somebody and say, God is a blesser. Now, I know this seems like Christianity 101 for some, but we sometimes need to go there to be able to knock any walls down that are, stop, are trying to stop us from receiving from Almighty God because sometimes things go wrong in our life or there's a problem that arises in our life 
or a situation situation takes place in our life and we get mad at God and start thinking that God brought that into our life and that God is trying to curse us and God is mad at us and all that. So it's time sometimes to stop, blow the whistle, tell everybody to sit down and get back into the word of God and remind ourselves that God is not the evil one. God is not the one that brings curses. God is the blesser. Turn to somebody and say, God is the blesser. Now, the whole explanation is God is the blesser. He made this earth. He made it beautiful. Everything was very good when God made it. When we read that, we, we, we realize there's no death. There's no uh, diseases. There's nothing. Everything was very good. But then Satan came along. Satan came along, and he caused man to rebel against God. And when he did, he brought a curse on this earth. See, Satan is the curser. That means you and I shouldn't curse because we're following Oh, Satan. Uh, why don't you say this? God is the blesser. Is blesser. Satan, is the Satan is the cursor. He made a mess. He made man sin and fall short. He, he made him turn his eyes away from God. And when he did, a curse came out on the earth. The Old Testament shows us God's heart that even after the curse came on this earth because man sinned, God wanted man to be blessed. Now listen to this. If this is the God that really doesn't want you blessed or doesn't want people blessed, something's wrong here. But it's not wrong. It's the Word of God. I'm going to read to you from Numbers chapter 6. By the way, uh, the person that was reading the Scriptures on Wednesday, some didn't realize that. It was, uh, it was my wife, Leanne. It was her voice, and her own mother listened to it back home, I guess, and wasn't sure that it was her daughter reading that. So that was her. So I told her today that I had several people call and say, Pastor, if you're going to read any scriptures today, please don't read them. Have Leanne read them. But, but, but she said uh, no. But anyway, in Numbers chapter 6, verse 22, this is God. Now watch, this is God. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and his sons, saying uh, this wise, Ye shall bless the children of Israel. He, he's actually saying, I want you to bless the children, not kiss the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee, not curse thee, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee. And be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Now watch this. God Almighty wants a blessing on the children of Israel. At the time, they were his people. They were his only people. And he said, I want Aaron, the high priest, and his sons to speak a blessing over the people. Because when they speak the blessings, then I'll be able to bless them. Uh, what we say with our mouth can bring a blessing or a curse, and we ought to make sure we speak a blessing over ourselves and over other things, because we are all, if we're saved, we're priests unto God. So we should watch what we say, amen? Turn to say, somebody and say, bless you. And now let me say this to you. Choose blessing, choose blessing, choose blessing, choose blessing, choose blessing, choose blessing. Receive blessing, receive blessing, receive blessing, receive blessing, receive blessing. Watch, that's exactly what God did. He said, I made the earth to be a blessing. Satan messed it up. And now I want my priest to speak a blessing over the children of Israel because I want to bless them. But it doesn't stop there. The New Testament also shows us God's heart over in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everything that hangeth upon a tree. That the blessings, or say blessings, God wants you blessed. He put the curse on Jesus that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. God wants you blessed. God spoke to uh, Moses and have Aaron speak a blessing. God speaks here and he says, I want you to know uh, Jesus came because that way he'll take the curse and you will have a blessing. God wants you blessed. Turn to somebody and say, may God bless you. Jesus Christ made this clear in some verses that here at Good News Church we're very familiar with and other churches around the country and around the world. They are also very clear on these verses, but we just want to remind you that Jesus Christ, in the Old Testament, it shows God wants you blessed. Then it shows that there's a blessing because Jesus took our sins upon him, took the curse. But then Jesus himself tries to explain to us that God is a blesser. In, in John 10, 10, the scripture again, that's familiar to some. It says, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and destroy. 
That's a curse. But I have come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. That's a blessing. Amen? Amen? God wants you blessed. Receive God's blessing. A scripture that people know, uh, probably the most uh, known scripture in the world, certainly and absolutely the most translated into different languages verse in the Bible, is John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Just think about that. You read that, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, a blessing that you'll not perish, take you away from the curse, but you'll have everlasting life, a blessing. God wants you blessed. But it goes on in verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world to curse you. No, it doesn't say that, but that's what it's saying. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn you. Say this, God wants me blessed. He doesn't condemn me. He blesses me. For God sent not his son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world, but the world through him might be saved. But now watch verse 18. Put 18 up there if you would, please. Now watch this. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. That means people, when they're born into this world, their sin nature. They sin. And no one, no one is perfect. Everybody falls short of the glory of God, so everybody sins. So Jesus came in the world that as a blessing to take away the curse from you. And he isn't here to curse the world. He's here to bless the world. Now watch. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Now watch. We're already condemned, but once we believe on Jesus, we're blessed, and we're no longer condemned. Amen? You could say it this way. We're already cursed. But once we receive Jesus Christ, we're no longer cursed because we receive Jesus Christ. And what this verse is saying, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you're no longer cursed. But if you don't believe in Jesus Christ and you've rejected him, then unfortunately you stay cursed. Not that you get cursed, but you already are under the curse. Now watch. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is, con is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of Jesus. Today we want you to receive the blessing of God. Today, we want to, well, I'm going to go through all that to position us into receiving the blessing of God. I want you to see that God in the Old Testament, God, even bef God before uh, Moses, before all that, he blessed the world, he blessed man, he blessed woman. God has always been a blesser. God wants you to receive his blessing. And even after man messed up, he sent Jesus Christ because God wants you blessed. And Jesus took the curse so you could have a blessing. God wants you blessed. Amen? God wants you you blessed. So today I'm going to encourage you, receive the blessing of God. And if you're a Christian, let me remind you that you are blessed. Christians are already blessed. We have a heavenly father. Thank God forevermore. Amen. We have a heavenly father that loves us and cares about us, a heavenly father that watches over us, a heavenly father that never leaves us nor forsakes us, a heavenly father that's always there listening to us, a heavenly father. Those that are Christians who can pray in the name of Jesus, we can pray in the name of Jesus, and God hears our prayers and answers our prayers. We, we, we should know we are blessed. Turn to somebody and say, receive God's blessing. We, we're blessed because our sins have been forgiven. Now listen to me. We're blessed because our sins have been forgiven. Now, remember what I just said, because the devil will tell you they have not been forgiven, because he wants to keep you under what they call condemnation or under a curse. Remember this. Christians, you are blessed because you have a heavenly father. You're blessed because he sent his son, Jesus Christ. You're blessed because your sins are forgiven. You're not cursed. Maybe you've made mistakes, but you've put it under the blood of Jesus, and now you're in a position to be blessed. Say, I'm blessed in Jesus' name. The Bible tells us that we are the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. We're victors. In fact, we're more than conquerors in Jesus' name. So you are blessed. Say, I'm blessed in Jesus' name. Now remember this, the God that made the world made a world that was a blessing. The God that saw man messed up sent a Savior so we could receive a blessing. The God who, who loves man worked through the Israelites and had the high priest speak blessings over God's people, not a curse. 
And the God who loves us so much sent Jesus Christ so he could take our curse and give us a blessing. Uh, say, I'm blessed in Jesus' name. You know, and, G and, and also we're blessed because God sent his Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you and thank you and acknowledge that you're here today. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here. We, are, we praise God for sending you, Holy Spirit. We thank you. You are the comforter. We thank you for comforting us in our time of uncomfort. We thank you that you're the counselor for guiding and leading and directing us, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you for being our, our comforter and our counselor. Thank you. Thank you for reminding us. You know what the Word of God says about the Holy Spirit? The, Jesus says is he'll put you in remembrance of the words that I've spoke. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding us what Jesus said. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing power into our lives because you'll receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Today, we we'll want you encourage you to remember that you're blessed, and maybe we just need to flip our switch in our minds and say, you know what? I'm ready to receive the blessings of Almighty God. Why don't you just say that? I, no, hold on. Don't say it before. I, now watch. What we say with our mouths really does have an effect. <coughs> Stay out. They don't come in come in they come in so what we say with our mouth is pretty important somebody comes up leave me alone or hey come on over what we say with our mouth is very important i receive jesus christ as lord and savior that's important i reject the gospel of jesus christ what you say with your mouth you can receive something or reject it just simply by what you say with your mouth so today, I'm going to encourage you to be someone who, who just makes a decision. Today, I'm going to receive the blessings of God. So I want you to say, today, today. I'm, going to I'm going to receive the blessings of God. The blessings of God. Now, maybe you've already received them, so you can say it this way. Today, today. I'm, going to I'm going to acknowledge that God's blessings, that God's blessings are moving in my life. In my life. I open the door. To God's, blessings, to God's blessings, and I slam the door, slam the door. On, the on the curse. Number one is simply this. Receive God's blessings at church. Receive God's blessings at church. God wants us, when we are in church, to receive God's blessings. So right now, this very moment, during praise and worship, we could have received God's blessings. I certainly did. Kirk, you praise your, your praise team and you. What a blessing. What a time to receive blessing. Oh, man. I love, love, love receiving the blessings in church. I love people of God, being around people of God. I love people of God smiling and saying, God bless you. I love you, Pastor. I love to turn to them and say, I love you, too. Uh, we should be able to receive the blessings of God when we're in church. Amen? So we should make it a point. I'm going to be blessed when I walk in that door today. I'm going to be blessed when I walk in that door tonight, if it's Wednesday. I'm going to be blessed when I go to church. Over in Psalm 84, verses 1 through 4, in the Amplified, it says it this way, How lovely are your dwelling places, O Lord of hosts. O soul, my life, my inner life, longs and greatly desire the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. The bird has found a house and the, shallow, and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young, even your altars, O Lord of hosts, O God and my God, blessed and greatly favored are those who dwell in your house and your presence. They are, there will be singing your praises all day long. Now watch. We ought to walk into church and say, I'm going to get blessed. I'm going to get blessed when I get to church. When I walk in that door, I'm going to get blessed. I'll tell you why. As a pastor, I'll be saying, we're going to bless today. We're going to bless today. Kirk and his team will be going, we're going to bless today. We're going to bless today. We're going to bless today. If you walk in saying, I'm going to get blessed, and we are ministering, we're going to, you're going to get blessed, guess what's going to happen? We're going to be blessed. Turn to somebody and say, I'm not going to curse you today. <laughs> like I did last week. I'm going to bless you today. Many times at church, people do that. They curse each other. They bring strife, division. That's not right. We should walk in here, in here ready to be a blessing. Amen? In Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, it says, For where two or three are gathered in my name, a meeting 
together as my followers. I am there among them. Uh, I, I, I love this one pastor's name was Pastor uh, Paul Youngi Cho, a pastor over in Korea. And he had a, a chair on his uh, platform all the time, empty chair. And it was there to remind him that he wasn't number one. The Holy Spirit was number one. In his holy place, we always need to make room for God. Amen. Amen. Sure, we want to have good programs at Christmas, Easter, and all kinds of times like that. But the most important thing is to acknowledge him. Because he's here. Where two or three of us are gathered together, he's here with us. We're blessed because he's with us. Amen. Now, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, it says in the Amplified, not forsaking our meeting together as believers for worship and instruction. As, in the, as is the habit of some, even back then, some weren't getting together for worshiping God and receiving instructions from the Word. But encouraging one another. We should be encouraging one another. I look at somebody and say, I should be encouraging you. Now look back. I'm serious. Look back and say, not discouraging you. Now look back and say, look back and say, boy, that'd be refreshing. <laughs> oh, I'm not saying it'd be changed or different. I'm just saying, boy, it'd be refreshing. As is a habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more faithfully as you see the day of Christ's return approaching. We're getting closer and closer to Jesus Christ coming back to this earth. We need to come to church. We need to receive the blessing of God that's in the church. We need to receive the blessing of God when you gather together with other believers. You need to receive that blessing. That's why God instituted this thing of getting together as a church, getting together as a group of people, because he wants this to be a time where he can bless us. Amen? Turn to somebody and say, be blessed in Jesus' name. Now, now, now hear me. Don't let Satan, now listen to me, don't let Satan steal your blessing in church. And don't let him use you to steal somebody else's blessing in church. Be used to bless somebody and, re and come expecting to be blessed. Amen? Turn to somebody and say, be blessed in Jesus' name. In Psalm 133, verse 1, it's a, it's a song of degree of, of David. Uh, it says, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in, what was that word, uh, in what? How good and how, uh, how pleasant it is for brethren to d dwell together in what? Uh, why don't you look at the person next to, say, next to you and say, I'm expecting a blessing, are you? I am. Are you? I am. Are you? I'm expecting a blessing. How about you? And if we are, we're together, we're in unity. So how good and pleasant it is for brethren and sisters to dwell together in unity. We're here to give God honor. We're here to bless God. And we're here to receive a blessing and to bless others in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Point two is this, receive God's blessing on your journey. We're all on a journey of life. Some are further along, possibly. Some are just beginning, possibly. Some are in the middle of your journey of life, but we all are on a journey of life. And on your journey of life, you can make a determination from the very beginning, in the middle, or toward the end. You can make a determination on your journey of life, I'm going to receive a blessing. You say, oh, I'm toward the end of my life. You can receive a blessing right where you are. R the place you are in your journey of life, you can receive a blessing. So I could have been blessed when I was young. No, stop that. You can be blessed when you're younger, at the beginning of your journey of life, but you can also be blessed in the middle of your journey of life. And yes, you can be blessed toward the end of your journey of life. It's just a decision. I'm going to receive a blessing from God. Amen? In Psalm 84, verse 5, in in God's word translation, is blessed are those who find strength in you. It's not to God. Their hearts are on the road that leads to you. They're on a journey. And as they walk with God, they go, you know what? I'm blessed because I'm on the road with God. I'm on the road to the better things of God. I'm on the road to a deeper relationship with God. And in my journey of life, no matter if it's at the beginning, it's the 
the middle or if it's at the end of my life, I, I, I hear the angels singing. I, I think it's about time. You can be blessed at the end, the middle, or at the beginning of your life. Make a decision. God is a blesser. He's always been a blesser. He's not been a cursor. Satan is a cursor. God wants to bless us, and I'm going to be blessed where I'm at in my journey of life. I'm going to be blessed on my journey of life. Amen? God wants you blessed. God wants to guide you on your journey. God wants to help you on your journey. God wants to be with you on your journey. God doesn't want to leave you nor forsake you on your journey. God will be with you every step of the way if we acknowledge him and open our hearts to him. In Psalm 23, in verse 4, some of you know this, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he's on a journey, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. God is with us. Wherever you are on your journey, you can receive a blessing on your journey of life. Let me pray for you right now. Father, in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, I thank you that wherever anyone listening at home or here are on their journey with you or their journey of life that you're there i ask you to bless them on their journey of life as they acknowledge you and open their hearts to you bless them bless them guide them on their journey father bless them on their journey father comfort them direct them and protect them on their journey of life. I thank you, Father God. I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. In Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 6 through 8, in the God's Word, it says, Be strong and courageous. Don't tremble. Don't be afraid of them. The Lord your God is the one who is going with you. He, when you're on this journey, he's with you on the journey of life. He's the one going with you. He won't abandon you or leave you. Then Moses called for Joshua and said to him in, in the presence of all of Israel, be strong and courageous. Look up at me. Be strong and be courageous in Jesus' name. He's with you. He'll not leave you. He'll not forsake you. He'll be there to lift you up and to strengthen you, whatever you are facing. Be strong and be courageous. He'll not abandon you. He'll not turn his back on you. He's not the one who's a shadow of turning. He will not turn away. He loves you. Then Moses said unto Joshua and said unto him in the presence of Israel, Be strong and courageous. You, you will go with these people into the land that the Lord will give them as he swore to the ancestors. You will help them take possession of the land. The Lord is the one who is going ahead of you. God is going ahead of you. God is making the path smoother for you. God is knocking obstacles, obstacles out of your way if you acknowledge it and allow him to do that. He wants to do that. The Lord is the one who is going ahead of you. He will be with you. He's not le left you. He's with you whatever you're going through mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, at work, at home, whatever it is, God has not left you. God is a blesser. He won't leave you. Don't leave him. Amen. The Lord is the one who is going ahead of you. He will be with you. He won't abandon you or leave you. So don't be afraid or terrified because he is with me on my journey. Amen. 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 The journey can sometimes confuse us. The journey can sometimes get us mixed up, like, what's going on? But the one thing we can always know on the journey is God is with us. God will protect us. And if there's a rough spot in our journey, God will bring us through that spot. Amen? Amen. Receive strength from God right now. Receive help on the inside of your being right now. Just receive the blessing of God. Receive the strength of God in you right now. Receive the power of God in you right now. Receive the healing, the health. Receive whatever it is you need from God right now. Receive God's supernatural blessing into your lives right now. Amen. Be blessed. Number three is simply this. Receive God's blessings as you surrender to God. It's an amazing thing if you and I had a thief put a gun in our back and tell us to raise our hands, and we raised our hands, 
we would be surrendering to that person. That person might steal from us. That person might kill us. That person might wound us. That person might hurt us. When we surrendered to that thief, that thief could kill us, hurt us, steal from us, and do all kinds of bad. But if you surrender to God, he gives to you. He strengthens you. He builds you. He's there with you. When you surrender to God, God, I surrender to you. And the more I surrender to God, the more blessing of God I receive into myself. He's not a thief that steals. He's someone when I surrender to him, he pours his blessings into me. And, no. In Psalm 84, verse 11, it says, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. He bright lights the way, and he also shield that won't hurt, things won't hurt you. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. And another translation says, from those who uh, are surrender to him. In the Bible, there's a man called Enoch. It's in, in Hebrews 11. We're not going to go to that scripture and read all these, but all I'm about to say, Hebrews 11 is what they call the, the hall of faith. Talking about some faith heroes in the Bible. Enoch was one who totally surrendered to God, raised his hands and gave his whole life to God. And it says, God took him to be with him. It says, he walked and all of a sudden he was not there because God blessed him so much. Noah was somebody who surrendered to God. And God guided him when no one else was surrendering to God, everybody else was withholding. And everybody else perished. But Noah, he was blessed. God blesses those that surrender to him. Abraham left his home, left his family, said, I'll follow you. I don't even know where I'm going to live. He lived in tents for a long time. He didn't know anywhere where he was going to go. Only God would guide him as he went. He didn't have any children, and God blessed him mightily because Abraham surrendered to Almighty God. Don't be afraid to surrender to God. Don't be afraid to surrender to God. Don't be scared to surrender to God. These men and women of God in Hebrews 11 found out that when you surrender to God, he doesn't steal from you. He doesn't harm you. He doesn't demean you. He doesn't put you down. He builds you up. He gives to you, and he strengthens you, and he protects you, and he blesses you. Today, receive God's blessing into your life. Receive God's blessing, and make a determination. When I come to church, I'm receiving a blessing from God. Amen. On your right here, I'm going to receive a blessing today, and I'm going to be a blessing today, because I'm going to be in the house of God with other believers yeah, receive God's blessing when you're in church and on your journey of life. A bump comes along. You say, well, I don't know how God's going to do it, but he's going to bring a blessing out of this bump. Amen. I don't know how he's going to turn it around, but he's going to turn this thing around. I don't know how he's going to do it, but I have faith in my God. I'm receiving a blessing on my journey of life and receive a blessing as you and I surrender our hearts, our minds, our lives, to Almighty God. If there's something between you and God, surrender it to God. Is there something that God has been speaking to you that you should get rid of and yet you've been holding on to it? I just encourage you to let go of it. Surrender to God. When he takes that from you, it's because it's going to harm you. When a thief down the street, when he takes something from you, it's because whatever it is is going to bless you and he wants to take away your blessing. When God says, give me that, it's because he wants to take away that which is going to harm you and give you something that will bless you instead. Turn to somebody and say, God is so good. Yeah. Point four is simp simply this. This is Communion Sunday. Receive God's blessing when receiving Holy Communion. Jesus Christ, who is the Son of Almighty God. Jesus Christ, who said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You never saw Jesus taking, hurting, killing people. What you saw Jesus Christ do is heal, bless people, feed people. So Jesus when he got ready to leave, he's having Passover meal with his disciples. And they're sitting at the table. 
And he changes the Passover meal into something that will, listen, bless all that receive communion down through the remainder of time. Wherever we are on our journey, Jesus spoke clear back here. And he said, this will bless all those who journey through this world and receive me. And when he speaks about receiving Holy Communion, it's because he wants you blessed when you receive it. It's not just a routine. It's just not something we do. It's, it, good habits are good habits. Bad habits are bad habits. But sometimes if we just say habit, people go, it's just a habit. And so sometimes you can say a routine. Some routines are bad. Some routines are good. Uh, sometimes you can, a tradition can be good. A tradition can be bad. A tra- tradition can lose its power because you forget about what it really means. And so we want to stop for a moment and say, yeah, this could be called a tradition of the Christian church but it's a good tradition. Jesus, who is the image of his Father, wants you blessed. And during communion time, you can receive a blessing. Your body can receive strength and healing. Your mind can receive strength and healing. Your emotions can receive strength and healing. Your spirit can be energized and strengthened. Your faith can grow stronger as we receive Holy Communion. Today I want you to be blessed. My desire is that you will receive the blessings of Almighty God. Receive it when you're in church. Receive it when you're in journey of life. Receive it. Just receive the blessings of God. Receive the blessings of God. And receive the blessings of God when you surrender to God. Maybe there's something between you and God. It's time to just get rid of it as we get ready to receive Holy Communion. If you let it go, he's going to give you so much more. But for sure, Jesus wants you blessed and God wants you blessed. And we get ready to receive Holy Communion. Let's not do it out of a routine. And let's not do it out of dry tradition. Let's not do it just because it's a habit that we do at Good News Church at the first Saturday, first worship service we have of the beginning of the month. But let's do it remembering, my God wants me blessed. And my God has already blessed me with Jesus. Why don't you get your, your juice and your cracker ready. Those of you at home, if you want to, it'd be a good idea. Go ahead and re- get it ready. And we're going to receive a real blessing. Because, see, there's a supernatural blessing we can, we can miss. There's a spiritual blessing. We can just do something out of routine routine and miss it. Let this not be a time where we just receive it. Let this be a time where we realize and receive the blessing that Jesus wanted us to receive. Anybody needs it? Anybody needs it? If you have it, why don't you go ahead and open the juice and get it ready. I'm going to read to you from the Word of God. And this is the Apostle Paul writing this. And he says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, I want you to think for a moment. We're going to stop. It says, On the same night in which he was betrayed. This is the night they're going to, Judas is going to betray him. They're going to take him out of the garden. And he knows he's going to be going to the cross, and he knows he's going, to, he's going to die. What does he know? He knows he's on the journey of life, and he knows where he's at. And he knows it's just a journey. I'm going to get through this, and then I'm going to be set to the right hand of the Father. And he says to us, you're just on the journey. I'm with you. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, the bread, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Why don't you go ahead and just receive the bread. Father, we thank you for the bread, and we receive the blessing that's on this time in Jesus' name. In the same manner also, he took the cup. 
after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Now stop, don't receive it yet. But why did he say, do this? Do you remember, it says that Jesus took the curse on the cross so we could receive the blessings. He's reminding us, when you receive Holy Communion, remember I took the curse because that opens you up to receive the blessings. Father, we thank you for the cup. We thank you for the shed blood of Jesus. We thank you that Jesus took a terrible thing, Calvary, and turned it around for a blessing. Thank you, Father God, that we're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. In Jesus' name, go ahead and receive the cup, please. Nathan, God is good, isn't he? God is good. God is good. Now just relax for a moment. I just want to bless you in the name of the Lord. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I speak blessing over you. And yes, I speak blessing into you. I speak God's blessing on you, in your mind. I speak God's blessing in your spirit. I speak the blessing of God on your body. I speak the blessing of God everything you put your hand to. I speak God's blessing in the name of Jesus. Now, receive the blessing of God. It's always a good time when someone says, I say, I receive it. In your mind, in Jesus' name. Receive the blessing of God in your spirit, in Jesus' name. Receive the blessing of God into your body, in Jesus' name. Be blessed, be blessed, be blessed, be blessed, be blessed in church and at home. Be blessed, be blessed, be blessed in your journey of life. Be blessed as you surrender to God. Be blessed, be blessed, be blessed, be blessed, be blessed, be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. Love you guys.
precious Lord. Precious Lord. declares the universe declares your majesty you are holy Holy. Lord of heaven and earth 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 Praise God. I'm going to thank you for coming today. I'm going to ask you to do exactly what we talked about today, and that is when we're in church, let's be a blessing. Let's bless someone. So if you today, as you leave, would just speak a blessing over somebody. Say, be a blessed. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Be blessed. And, and ask them, say, do you need prayer for anything? We can just bless you, whatever it is. And if it takes more than, you know, 30 seconds for them to tell you what's wrong, just say, oh, well, let's stop for a moment. Not because you don't care, but because you want to shift it into praying and ministering to them because you care about them, okay? So be blessed in Jesus' name. Be blessed as you go. Be a blessing as we're here today. God bless you, and thank you so much for coming to Good News. We pray. We, we, we appreciate you. God bless. Bye-bye.